Welcome to Nationwide, reaching you live from NTA. I am Kengde Olale. Thanks for joining us. President Mohamed Buhari is in, the new Ned is in the Netherlands ahead of the 20th anniversary celebration marking the adoption of the Rome status of the International Criminal Court at The Hague. President Buhari, being the only world leader invited to deliver a keynote address, will reaffirm Nigeria's support for the fundamental values and ideas of the ICC and his administration's campaign against corruption in Nigeria. While in Hague, President Buhari is expected to meet with the Prime Minister of the Netherlands, Mark Rotto, to discuss bilateral issues such as migration, peace, security, economic cooperation. The President is also expected to meet the ICC Prosecutor, Ms. Fatou Bensouda, and some Dutch Chief Executive Officers of companies based in Nigeria. The presidency has dispelled some insinuations that the president is not doing enough to tackle insecurity in the country. Our correspondence brings us details of some of the steps taken so far since January 2018 to combat insecurity in the country. The presidency says securing the length and breadth of the country is a continuing commitment of the Buhari administration, which it is carrying out a day and night. In a statement by the Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Femi Adeshina, the Presidency dispels insinuation that the President is not doing enough to tackle the security challenges facing the country. The statement highlighted some of the effort by the President, particularly since January 2018, to rid the nation of all forms of criminality, terrorism and insurgency. In the month of January, the leadership of the police force was deployed to Benue State following a mass killing in the state. Vice President Professor Yemi Oshimbaju also headed a 10-man committee constituted by the National Economic Council on Farmers and Edmen Clashes. In the same month, the one division of the Nigerian Army in collaboration with the Nigerian Air Force, Nigerian Police Force, Department of State Service and other security agencies launched Operation Karamingoro, meaning smoke colour not to tackle kidnapping, robbery and cattle rustling in parts of Kaduna and Niger State. This was followed by exercise Ayayem Akbatuma, which covered Benue, Taraba, Kogi, Nasarawa, Kaduna and Niger State. The Nigerian Air Force also inducted its first indigenous operational unmanned aerial vehicle. President Mohamed Buhari began visits to states affected by the wanton killings in the month of March. The committee set up by the National Economic Council on Farmers and Ed's Men Clashes in the month of March submitted its report, making far-reaching recommendations for peace, including ranching in five states. The Nigerian Air Force took delivery of a second batch of a two brand new MI 35N helicopter, a gunship, to battle internal security. President Mohamed Obuari, in his effort to do more, approved the establishment of a new battalion of Nigerian. The Nigerian army has refuted claims alleging attacks on soldiers and capturing of military vehicles by Boko Haram in Bama local government area of Borno State, describing the report as untrue and misleading. A statement by the director of Army Public Relations, Brigadier General Texas Choku, reveals that there was indeed an attempted attack on troops at Kwakwa and Chingori communities in Bama area by suspected insurgents attributed to the 
difficult terrain who also attempted to cut away troops' operational vehicles but were swiftly repelled by the troops with the help of the Nigerian Air Force. The statement also adds that though one officer and a soldier sustained injuries, about 22 members of the sect were neutralized, while others escaped with gunshot wounds. However, efforts are being intensified to apprehend the fleeing suspected insurgents. The director of public relations appealed to members to media practitioners to verify facts from appropriate military authorities and advise the public to disregard the report and remain calm as the army and other security agencies are doing everything possible to end insurgency in the country. The Nigerian police force in Sabongida Ora on West Local Government Council of Edo State have confirmed the killing of four police personnel by unknown gunmen on, on Saturday evening. Victor Odion Acha, who visited the scene, reports that the remains of the officers have been deposited at the morgue. Four officers are two inspectors, with one due for retirement in April next year, and two sergeants who were ambushed at a checking point at the Sabongida Ora IOC junction when they were to resume the evening duty on Saturday at the checking point. The officers were said to have left the Sabongida Ora Divisional Headquarters at about after 6 in the evening and were about parking at their normal checking point at the junction when some unknown men opened fire on them while they were still inside the vehicle and the four of them died on the spot while the vehicle exploded and burnt the officers beyond recognition. When the news crew visited the scene, the remains of the officers have already been taken to the mortuary while the debris of the burnt vehicle was still on the scene. Though no eyewitness could say exactly what transpired, as the residents denied commenting on the issue, the police suspect an ambush going by the nature of damage and direction of the ammunition found on the scene. Meanwhile, the Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of operation, the head of state anti-robbery squad, SAS, and others who represented the Commissioner of Police, paid an on-the-spot assessment visit to the area to ascertain the cause of the incident with a promise to arrest those behind the killings. The Commissioner of Police delegates also paid a condolence visit to the families of the officers who lost their lives. From Sabogida Ora, Victor Odion Acha, NTA News. The National Assembly 2018 Open Week has commenced in Abuja with the aim of improving public confidence in the democratic institution, particularly the legislature. President Muhammad Buhari, represented by the SGF Boss Mustafa, and all the key stakeholders say the theme, advancing inclusive governance through legislative openness, promotes parliamentary transparency by giving citizens opportunity to influence legislative deliberations and clear misconceptions conception held by the public. Most developed countries have invested heavily in developing the infrastructure and institutions for good and open governance. It is the determination of this government to be in the league and to lay a foundation for its sustainability world act as unifying forces in a democratic society because the manner of their composition makes them the true representative of the people. It follows therefore that the National Assembly is the closest arm of government to Nigerian people with every single member that has been elected by those whom we serve. The wide ranging activities that we have planned for this week will ensure that we remain the closest to the people and our doors will remain open. The Parliament has adopted the declaration and this open week, which kicks off today, is the consummation of our adoption of these noble principles of parliamentary openness. It is the event featured a documentary on the history of the Nigerian National Assembly and a comedy skit by notable Nollywood actors highlighting the theme. The five-day event will continue to highlight the work being done by the National Assembly to advance legislative openness by creating avenues for interaction between legislators and active citizens, including civil society organizations, traditional rulers, and media practitioners. 
guests on Good Morning Nigeria have called on all relevant stakeholders to step up awareness campaign to discourage buying a vote during elections. This may be made the plea while reviewing the Kitty governorship election held last Saturday. Lydia Sampton reports. State governorship election had generated anxiety and uproar, especially with the massive deployment of security personnel. Guests in Good Morning Nigeria expressed satisfaction with the way and manner the election was conducted. The process of voting, uh, accreditation and voting took place simultaneously and all the plans that we made were, were executed perfectly. Uh, we, en we encountered a few problems with the card reader uh, in a few places, but uh, our technical staff were mobilized immediately to, to counter these things and they were in isolated cases. You know Ekiti, Ekiti is a flashpoint uh, on when it comes to election violence in this country, there's no doubt, even during general election. Mm -hmm. And to achieve this level of peace even after the election, uh, I think kudos goes to Nigerian police force and other security agencies that uh, complement our operation during the process. The guests commended the introduction of tracking devices and the professionalism brought to bear by the police and other security agents in the exercise. They however expressed dismay over the new trend to undermine the process. The money paid was the inducement. That was what motivated people to exercise, you know, whatever choice. They did that because they were paid. I think our democracy should have grown beyond this particular level of uh, money politics. Although the exercise was adjudged by both local and international observers as free, fair and credible, however, the first police public relations officer acting DCP Jumo Moshud said the police have apprehended some suspects in connection with their light vote buying and ballot boxes snatching. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. And the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onoge, says the integrity of the judiciary has a direct bearing on the growth of the nation's democracy. He stated this at the opening of an orientation program for newly appointed magistrates across the country. Judiciary correspondent Femi Okewu reports. The magistracy is the first leg up the ladder of becoming a judicial officer. And although magistrates do not take the judicial oath, they are bound by the judicial ethics of the national judicial policy. So, with these appointments across the country, Chief Justice of Nigeria expects a positive impact not just on the judiciary, but also on the nation's polity. He says a good judiciary should have a positive bearing, even on democracy, through impartial judgments. Democracy in itself is nothing if the implication of the fundamental principles enshrined in the Constitution by this nation cannot be readily determined in constitutional adjudication by a judiciary mind manned by upright judicial officers. During the orientation at the National Judicial Institute, the magistrates are expected to go through all the necessary rudiments of judicial ethics and conduct. Judicial accountability is important. Therefore, discipline must be embraced against the backdrop of the Code of Conduct for Judicial Officers in Nigeria. In Abuja, Femi Okewu, NTN News. Minister of Education says for grading of Unity Schools, Elizabeth in Lagos, has details of this and all the stories making the round in Lagos and environs. Over to you, Elizabeth. Hello, Kane Day, and thanks for joining us in Lagos. Graduating students of Chrisland schools who excelled in the 2018 Senior Secondary School Certificate Examination have been urged to be good ambassadors of the school. The advice was given at a joint valedictory service, short service, and prize giving ceremony in Lagos. Guests at the event, chaired by the former Minister of Information, Professor Jerry Ghana, tasked the students to use the knowledge acquired to develop themselves and the society. Paul Umokago reports. Nasso Ogweshe and Ulutoyosi Kuti are beacons of academic excellence from a school that has carved a niche in the area of grooming and producing future successful professionals and leaders with a mindset for exceptional qualities. The Joint Valedictory Service for Graduating Students of Christland Schools, Idumu, Victoria Garden City, and Ikeja was the first part of events held to celebrate 
and reward 229 students who came out in flying colors in the senior secondary school certificate examination. Lagos mainland diocese Anglican Bishop, Right Reverend Akikbelu Johnson, in his exhortation at the service and the founder of the school, Winifred Awochika, urged the students to be good ambassadors of the school by exhibiting godly virtues through the knowledge acquired. So we are only here because it is His grace that has made it possible for us to be. Our children are going out highly motivated and they are going to do all of us proud and they will remember all of us. Former Minister of Information, Professor Jerry Gana, and the Vice Chancellor of Christland University, Abiekota, Professor Peace Babalola, also gave graduating students some leadership tips. Don't ever give up. You must be resilient. Don't let really move on. You have to be different to excel. Managing Director of Christland Schools Limited, Ibironke Adeyemi, led the principals of the three schools at Idumu, Victoria Garden City, and Ikeja in giving the year reports. For six solid years, these young, vibrant, hardworking boys and girls have been tutored and mentored to stand for excellence in all applications. High point of the event was the presentation of awards and plaques to students and parents. In Lagos, Paul Omukago, NTA News. The Minister of Education, Adamo Adamo, says the federal government is putting measures in place to improve facilities in all the unity schools across the Federation to enhance their role in fostering national unity. The minister stated this in Lagos while speaking at the 2018 graduation ceremony of King's College, Lagos. Jane Ojoko has details. The 104 Unity Colleges in Nigeria were set up to bring together children from diverse ethnic, religious and socioeconomic backgrounds for academic empowerment and most importantly to foster national unity. Many years down the line, challenges such as decay in infrastructure, inadequate teaching personnel and poor funding have become limiting factors in achieving set goals. The minister who was represented by the Director of Quality Assurance Services, Ministry of Education, Mr. Jonathan Mbaka, stressed the federal government's commitment towards upgrading unity colleges for optimal performance. The government is putting measures in place to ensure that these unity colleges go back to what they were originally designed for. In doing this, the government is improving the facilities in the schools. We need to upgrade the infrastructural facilities, give value the orientation to the students, the teachers equally needs uh, capacity building. Thank God, we are still a federal government is still very locked, holding these schools together. Since education is the bedrock of development, which requires collaboration of all stakeholders, the chairman Old Boys Association of the school said the Old Boys will embark on the renovation of all the facilities in both the main campus and the annex ahead of the 110th anniversary of the school, which comes up next year. We spend nothing less than 3.8 million monthly to assist the school. The graduating students say they have been developed intellectually and physically. I came as a very little boy from where with no experience. After six years, my life has become better. In Lagos, Jane Ujuku, NTA News. Meanwhile, Nigerian youths have been challenged to imbibe the ideals and values Nelson Mandela stood for by making a difference in their communities. Some notable speakers gave the charge at a lecture to commemorate the centenary of former president of South Africa, Nelson Mandela. Ken Igbele reports that the event was organized by the South African Consulate in Lagos as part of activities to mark Nelson Mandela's International Day. International Day 2018 marks 100 years of the birth of Nelson Mandela. The centenary is an occasion to reflect on his life and legacy. It is also to follow his call to make the world a better place for all. The lecture provided a platform for the youth to have a better understanding of the man many described as an icon. Speakers extolled Nelson Mandela's leadership and devotion to fighting poverty and promoting social justice for all. Today we are gathered here to remember one whose deeds, utterances, example, leadership and demeanor fired our aspirations and conscience. His accomplishments came at a great personal cost to himself and his family and his sacrifice not only served the people of South Africa but he made the world a better place for all of us. 
Going down memory lane, Professor Wole Shoyenka recalled with nostalgia his several meetings with Nelson Mandela, whose humility is equal to none. Professor Shoyenka narrated the humorous side of Nelson Mandela, which he said many do not know about. I have stayed in prison 27 years or nearly, and finally I'm having a decent breakfast the youth were not left out in the celebration as they spoke on their understanding of Nelson Mandela. July 18th every year has been adopted by the United Nations as Nelson Mandela International Day in recognition of his contribution to humanity. In Lagos, Ken Igbeluge, NTA News. And those are stories from Lagos at this hour. Over now to Ken Day in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Thank you, Elizabeth. Across the globe, there is continued advocacy for youth to acquire and utilize their innate skills to change lives. This is because young people are seen as the powerhouse of any country. In this special report, Olai Nkaoju takes a look at this year's World Youth Skills Day with the theme, Skills Change Lives. In a constantly changing environment, um, to be able to meet up with everyday's challenges, I think acquiring a skill is very, very important. Celebrated 15th July every year, World Youth Skills Day is a day set aside by the United Nations to raise awareness about the importance of investing in youth skills development. This thinking is due largely to the ever-increasing number of unemployed youths globally. Youth represent 35% of the total working age population. In Nigeria, 65% of the youths are below 35 years of age, with only 3% skilled before and after graduation. Survey by the United Nations shows that existing systems in some parts of the world are failing to address the learning needs of many young people. Starting is the major problem, but when you have this capital to start it, I think the whole thing has been settled. I can't have the money and have that skill and still be looking for a white collar job. No, no, no. When you have it, a skill, you are able to stand. You don't need anybody to employ you. Over the years, the federal government has been and is still committed to skills development for youths, aimed at making them self-reliant through different programs such as the cash transfer and the NYC skills acquisition and entrepreneurship development. We are also currently making efforts through the establishment of mega skill centers in the six geopolitical zones of the country. We have male hairdressers, so we could, can also have um, female barbers. So I don't think there's anything wrong with having female barbers. In the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the SDG Target 4.4, there's a call for a sustainable increase in the number of youths and adults who have relevant skills, and Nigeria is a key player. Experts are of the opinion that when young people acquire skills, the success circle globally will improve. Olayin Kaoju, NTA News. Earlier, my colleague Rhoda Ananam had a chat with the Director of Special Duties of the National Youth Service Corps, Mr. Ilari Nasamo, on a youth and skill acquisition in Nigeria. Here's an excerpt. Other parts of the world like China and other places where you have young people who are skilled but not necessarily having a BSc or a BA, but skills in a way has helped them to be self-reliant. There's a huge gap in Nigeria. What do you think is responsible? I think it's quite clear. The focus of Nigerian education had been primarily academic, okay. the academic qualification, the certificate, and that's because the public and civil service had always been the absorbing part of all graduates at all levels, whether in the primary, secondary, or tertiary. But when the economy or global economy eventually dictated the the collapse of the Nigerian economy, uh, the focus had to shift mm. to skills for self-reliance. Uh, government saw the need to use NYSC as a launching pad. So in 2012, NYSC formally launched the Skill Acquisition and Entrepreneurship Development Program when it became a full-fledged department. And beginning from that 2012, so much has been made to introduce core members to skills acquisition program so that 
beyond leaving the NYSC with the certificate of graduation from university and the certificate of service, mm -hmm. they live with some skill. Yeah. And in this endeavor, so much has been done because the, the level of interest of core members has progressively, you know, been in the upward swing. And that is why we can look back and tell you that in the camp where we introduced them mm -hmm. to the skills acquisition program, we have uh, sensitized more than a million core members, out of which over 700,000 have done the post-camp skill acquisition program. And talking about uh, government and the private sector, how do you think that the private sector can be encouraged? And of course, government too could also work with the private sector to improve on uh, skills acquisition for youths, because we're talking about a population of almost 200 million people. Yes. Skills acquisition for economic development is largely private sector driven. What government does is to provide the policies and the enabling environment in terms of incentives to make private sector drive the process. So in this regard, our appeal will continue to be more on the private sector, the financial institutions, and you discover that the platforms like we have in NYSE, I will always make reference to NYSE, for instance, the platforms we have we are in partnership with so many private uh, organizations okay. to provide the facilities, the equipment, and the finance. The platform for skill acquisition it's, it's, it cannot be provided by NYSE alone, even though we have on our own been building a, a skill acquisition centers. And so to a large extent, it's a private sector driven initiative. And this is Nationwide on Africa's largest TV network, the NTA. We'll be back after this timeout. Don't go away. Thank you for being there. Security matters barricading of Kaduna Zaria Highway. Let's join Rukaya in Kaduna as she brings us up to speed with details of this and more. Hello, Rukaya. Hello, Kainde. Welcome to Kaduna Network Center. Vehicle movement along Kaduna Zaria Road was disrupted Monday morning following a protest by Barakalao community in Kaduna State for alleged takeover of their lands by the Nigerian Air Force. Suleiman Abdullahi Rogachku was there and now reports. Vehicular movement along Kaduna Zaria Road was brought to a standstill for about two hours as a result of the protest by Barakalao community who barricaded the highway. <laughs> And we are trying to to get our destination that we cannot will not be able to get. Misunderstanding between the community and the Air Force has been on for years now. In 2011, the case was amicably resolved, leading to a relative peace between the two parties. The current protest the community say is triggered by the erection of perimeter fence by the Air Force, which they alleged is an encroachment into their land. What all we want is justice. We want the government to come in within to play justice within us. It took the intervention of senior army officers from one division, Nigerian Army, to dismantle the roadblock mounted by the protesters. NTS efforts to get the response of the Nigerian Air Force did not yield results, as we were told to wait for a press release, which we were yet to get us at the time of filing in this report. In Kaduna, I am Suleiman Abdullah Hirgachkun, NTA News. Governor Aminu Bello Masari of Katsuna State has identified effective collaboration with relevant stakeholders as a major step towards tackling security challenges. The governor stated this while speaking to NTA News on security situation in Katsuna State. Ibrahim, Ibrahim Bellogunda tells us more. Katsuna State, like many others in the country, has had its share of security challenges to do with farmers' headers clashes, cattle rustling, armed banditry, among others. These challenges affected the political, social, and economic lives of its residents, especially their sources of livelihood. To maintain an enabling environment for residents and socioeconomic activities to thrive, the Masari-led administration introduced amnesty program and other measures aimed at addressing the challenges. If you address 
the fundamental issues of area of education and uh, this agriculture and livestock, you will be solving more than 50% of this uh, uh, continuous violence uh, between uh, herders and, and the farmers. He noted that the state government will continue to work on security issues by ensuring its citizens are safe. We are being futuristic with regards to uh, all these issues. We, we are not no longer looking at uh, rearing of cattle in the way it was being done before. We are no longer looking at farming in the way it was being done before. We are also looking at the education uh, in, in, in today's age and tomorrow. Kaduna State Government is working with neighboring states of Kaduna, Zamfara, Sokoto, KB and Niger to tackle the issue of cross-border armed banditry and cattle rustling. In Kaduna, Ibrahim Bellagunda, NTA News. Towards curbing drug abuse and addiction in the society, the Nigerian Defense Academy Kaduna has held a sensitization campaign for youth and adults in the academy. Suleyman Abdullahi Rigachkun has the details. A drama sketch depicting the harmful effects of drug abuse among youths, pupils and students of NDS primary and secondary schools, cadets, staff, as well as officers' wives converged for the sensitization against drug abuse and addiction, violence, Crimes, health challenges such as hepatitis B and C, collapse of the veins and social structure, as well as personality changes are some of the major effects of drug abuse as highlighted by experts. While taking the participants through the early signs and symptoms of the acts, representative of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, Ibrahim Abba said, aside the usual abused drugs such as cannabis, cocaine, opioids, codeine, among others, Youths have also devised other tactics, hence advised parents to be observant. So any substance where you take into your body affects you. It affects where you live. It affects where you behave. It's called drug. And we don't want to have a crisis in the barracks. We want to prevent it getting into a crisis in the barracks. Too. Also part of the anti-drug abuse campaign was the one kilometer road work by participants. I am Suleiman Abdullah Hirgachkun, NTA News. And that's it from Kaduna. Back to Kainde for more stories on Nationwide. Thank you, Rukhaya. The need for peaceful coexistence using music as a tool for advocacy has been stressed. This was at the NTA Choir Concert 2018 with the theme Sound is Praise. Serafina Okun was there. There wouldn't have been a better time than now, as the NTA Choir, alongside other invited choirs, continue to pray for the nation through songs and praises. This is a modern edition of Ente Chapel of Resurrection concert as it attracted participants from across the states of the Federation. The representative of the Director General of Ente, Moses Obanaji, Executive Director Engineering says, giving praise to God is a step towards restoring the nation and moving her to greater heights. We believe in the process of this praise and worship, every irregularity in Nigeria will be eliminated. Praises, you know, God rises from his throne. So that we use it so as an avenue to sell happiness, to sell our hearts out. We must continually praise God. And he is the only one who deserves our praises. Whatever you say, we should surely come to pass. And the nation of your name. Bible readings and performances by different gospel artists spice up the event. The take home message remains that the essence of worship is not external, but an inner godly experience that comes manifest through service. In Abuja, I am Serafina Okun. NTA News. Let's take another break. Nationwide continues in a moment. Stay with us.
camera sector is evolving. Operators, including cameramen and photographers, require new skills and techniques to churn out world-class productions. A unique opportunity is open to all. NTA TV Collect Joss is organizing a four-week intensive short course in camera operation techniques aimed at enhancing the professional skills of cameramen and photographers, practicing and freshers. Date, 16th July to 10th August 2018. Another four-week intensive short course in photojournalism and photography holds 13th August to 7th September 2018. Venue for both courses is the TV College premises, NTA TV College, Rayfield, Joss. Fee, 100,000 Naira per participant, accommodation inclusive. For more inquiries, contact us on 0806-980-9807 and 0703-660-7155. TV College, Joss. Training you to be the best you want to be. When you hear that sound, you know that Nigeria's most authentic newscast is about to begin. NTA Network News, breaking the news for over 40 years. Thank you for staying with us. And now, Oname in Enugu has a next set of reports on Nationwide. Hello, Oname. What's trending in Enugu today? Good evening, kind day, and a warm welcome to Enugu. A seven-member judicial commission of inquiry into the killing of Igwe Stephen Watu and the civil disturbances at Obishinle Abugu, autonomous community in Nkano West local government area of Enugu State, has been sworn while performing the ceremony charged members of the commission to deploy their wealth of experience to discharge the task effectively. Joy Uweke has the details. The setup of the Judicial Commission of Inquiry became necessary following the civil disturbances at Obazine Abugo, which led to the death of the traditional ruler of the town, Igwe Stephen Watu, as well as destruction of property on 11th June 2018. The commission is to unravel the immediate and remote causes of the disturbances and make appropriate recommendations to the state government. The commission has Justice Ben Abata as its chairman, Kenis Ngene as secretary, while Professor Damian Opata and Chidi Ozokolo are members. Other members are Professor Anselm Onimoni, Clara Abo and Onochie Obuna. <laughs> The chairman of the commission promised to destroy their duties satisfactorily. We were confident that the confidence of the world in us is not misplaced. The commission has 12 weeks to submit its report in Enugu, Ijeonu, Weke, NTA News. The federal government has over the years introduced several initiatives, including subsidizing fertilizer to boost food production in the country. Ngozi Silva Technico in this special report takes a look at the fertilizer initiative with a view to ascertain the availability to farmers in Enugu. Some of the programs and initiatives by the past and present government to promote agriculture include Growth Enhancement Scheme, Anchor Borrowers Program. Others are the subsidization of fertilizer at the rate of 5,500 naira per bag. The aim is to increase farmers' yield with a view to diversify the nation's economy away from oil. It is therefore expected that different state governments will queue into the various initiatives to enable farmers at the grassroots to benefit maximally. A rice farmer from Aneri told NTA News Crew that farmers in the community are not aware of any program of either the state or federal government on fertilizer. So Fadama 3, which is a collaboration of the state, federal government, and World Bank. I didn't know much about federal government subsidy fertilizer. 
when the Fadama came in place. Investigation revealed that the present administration in the state is yet to initiate a program in that direction while a boy state government produced a multi-purpose fertilizer which is sold even at the open market at the price of 5,500 naira. This is has to do with uh, more hectares being under production. Farmers have appealed to the state and federal government to enhance the efficiency of the various initiatives for greater productivity. In Enugu, Ngozi Silva Technical, NTA News. That is our contribution from Enugu. It's back to Kende for more on Nationwide. Thank you, Aname. Concerned by systematic failure impending its development, the University of Abuja has pledged to return the institution to its dream, to the dream of its founding fathers, to meet global standard. Against this background, the university has inaugurated a committee to come up with a template that would help put things in the right perspective. Abdullah Musa Saleja has the details. The University of Abuja, established 30 years ago, was envisaged to promote scholarship, national unity, and a public service program to the social, cultural, and economic needs of not only federal capital, but the people of Nigeria. However, the pro-chancellor and chairman and governing council of the University, al Haji Sani Mekudi, said not much has been achieved in that direction. The University of Abuja appears to have veered off course over this which now requires that a strategic plan be re-evaluated to bring it not only in tandem with its mandate, but in line with the world practices. The council felt that the stakeholders in the system needed to be assured that the university can still and must be strengthened to attain those lofty objectives. Committee's terms of reference include to evaluate the strategic plan and its relevance to the mandate established in the university in line with global best practice. Others are to evaluate the relationship between all unions and the university and management as well as effectiveness of a feedback mechanism for addressing student and labor issues. The committee under the leadership of Professor Sabori Adesonya has three months to submit its report. Abdullah Musasleja, NTA News. Relief continues to come the way of internally displaced persons as Governor Lelong visits camps. Let's join Femichit in just for this and all the reports trending in that zone. Hello, Femichit. Good day and welcome to JOS. Party State Governor Simon Bakola Long has donated relief materials to the internally displaced persons camp at Angling Beach's South Local Government Area. Governor Lalong promised that government is making frantic efforts to ensure that they return to their various communities soon. Mary Domtu takes it from here. Governor Simon Lalong was taken around the camp to see the condition of the people where he sympathized and empathized with them, saying what affects the people affects all, assuring them that the federal government has provided funds to ensure they are rehabilitated back to their communities. Items distributed are beddings, grains, beverages, detergents, granite oil, palm oil, among others. <laughs> We are not happy that you people are in this condition. Government shares in your pain, and the security agencies will do all they can to bring perpetrators to face the full wrath of the law. National Emergency Management Agency and the state agency appeal to the government to collaborate with the Ministry of Environment to aid in the sanitary condition of the camp. Camp coordinator Mr. Francis Chung thanked the governor for coming to their aid in various ways, said the conditions in all the camps are similar, ranging from lack of water to the unhealthy conditions in the camps and beddings. However, the visit turned violent as some of the IDPs threw stones at the governor's convoy, destroying several vehicles. In just Mary Dontu, NTA News. As the issue of declining standard in Nigeria's education system continues to raise public concerns, a three-day education summit organized by the Federation of Muslims Women Association of Nigeria has ended in Jos. The summit with team overhauling the education system in Nigeria, the philosophy, the curriculum, 
teacher education and quality assurance drew participants from the 36 states of the Federation. Ruth Aria Samuel completes the report. The 18th Annual Form 1 Summit drew participants from all walks of life to deliberate on ways to make inputs into the education policies of the country and how to improve enrollment and retention into schools, as well as meeting the sustainable development goals in education. Education is as a means to reposition our team in a global competitive world. Professor Gerba Sharubutu and Sheikh Khalid Aliyu, while challenging women to educate their children, said lack of qualitative education is the highest form of corruption. The implication of this is to build up an uninformed youth, a large mental informed, so that we will be able to deal with children members. Like Representatives of the Plata State Governor, the Bongwam Joss, wife of the Governor, and Emir of Wasi applauded Form 1 on the summit. In Joss, Ruth Ario Samuel, NTA News. And that does it from Joss. Candidates, back to you for more news. Thank you, Femichit. There has been a lot of hue and cry among property owners over the payment of tenement rate and ground rent of the Federal Capital Territory. This raises question as to who to pay and what and which authority to be paid to. May Tari Ipen six clarification in this report. Musa Shehu Isiwele is a landlord in Wuse district of Abuja. Periodically, he receives bills for tenement rate and ground rent from different authorities in the nation's capital, and he finds the taxes rather confusing and the processes sometimes embarrassing. Send a letter of reminder. I've never actually any letter. The only time I saw was a, a notice that by next week we are invited to appear with a Wusi to Manjese court because we refuse to pay us. Ah, which type of notice is this? He speaks the minds of most property owners in FCT, some of who regard tenement rate and ground rent as double taxation. It's a double taxation because if one can pay ground rent, in respect of the land is owing, you pay it because it's a yearly payment. Uh, that's not need again asking the person to pay for tenement rent. But officials of the FCT administration responsible for ground rent and the Abuja Municipal Area Council, AMAC, which collects tenement rates, believe the annual taxes are justified. Ground rent are statutory fees if you apply and you are being granted land for 99 years. It's a monthly charge that is paid annually into our AGS revenue account. At the beginning of the year, mostly from February, we begin to roll out our bills. We go face by face. So the moment you get your bill, you make effort to make payments. We have like 21 days to make payments. After which you don't pay, we send reminders. The reminders we give like seven days, you don't pay. Then maybe we are forced to go to court. Are property owners liable to pay both tenement rate and ground rent at the same time? Whether it is landed, property bills, or a land, you are expected to pay the ground rent. Whether a landlord or a tenant, as long as you are occupying a property, you are expected to pay tenement rate. Tenement rate in particular has been a subject of litigation with the subsisting ruling by the Court of Appeal recognizing the constitutional right of the Abuja Municipal Area Council, AMAC, to collect tenement rate. AMAC Chairman Abdullahi Adamu Kandido says but for the litigations, a lot would have been achieved in terms of development. There is no any service within the city that AMAC as a government cannot provide. The only thing hindering us not providing such services is because we are not allowed free flow of collection. While some residents called for increased enlightenment of the public, others advocated harmonization of property tax collection in the FCT. Property owners in the FCT want the authorities to judiciously utilize all property revenues for the provision of more basic amenities, especially in the suburbs, to guarantee all-round development in the nation's capital. 
in Abuja, Mitaire, Igben, NTA News.